Once upon a time, while the Blessed One was residing in the Jetavana, there was a householder living in Savati, known to all his neighbors as patient and kind. But his relatives were wicked and contrived a plot to rob him. One day, they came to the householder and by worrying him with all kinds of threats, took away a goodly portion of his property. He did not go to court, nor did he complain, but tolerated with great forbearance the wrongs he suffered. The neighbors wondered and began to talk about it, and rumors of the affair reached the ears of the brethren in Jetavana. While the brethren discussed the occurrence in the assembly hall, the blessed one entered and asked, What was the topic of your conversation? And they told him. And the blessed one said, The time will come when the wicked relatives will find their punishment. Brethren, this is not the first time that this occurrence took place. It has happened before. And he told them a world old tale. Once upon a time, when Brahmadatta was king of Benares, the Bodhisattva was born in the Himalaya region as an elephant. He grew up strong and big and ranged the hills and mountains, the peaks and caves of the tortuous woods in the valleys. Once as he went, he saw a pleasant tree and took his food standing under it. Then some impertinent monkeys came down out of the tree and jumping on the elephant's back, insulted and tormented him greatly. They took hold of his tusks, pulled his tail and disported themselves, thereby causing him much annoyance. The Bodhisattva, being full of patience, kindliness and mercy, took no notice at all of their misconduct, which the monkeys repeated again and again. One day, the spirit that lived in the tree, standing on the tree trunk, addressed the elephant, saying, My lord elephant, why do you put up with the impudence of these bad monkeys? And he asked the question in a couplet as follows, Why do you patiently endure such freak, this mischievous and selfish monkey's reek? The Bodhisattva, on hearing this, replied, If, tree spirit, I cannot endure these monkeys' ill-treatment without abusing their birth, lineage and persons. How can I walk in the Eightfold Noble Path? But these monkeys will do the same to others, thinking them to be like me. If they do it to any rogue elephant, he will punish them indeed, and I shall be delivered both from their annoyance and the guilt of having done harm to others. Saying this, he repeated another stanza. If they will treat another one like me, he will destroy them, and I shall be free. A few days after, the Bodhisattva went elsewhere, and another elephant, a savage beast, came and stood in his place. The wicked monkeys, thinking him to be like the old one, climbed on his back and did as before. The rogue elephant seized the monkeys with his trunk, threw them on the ground, gored them with his tusk, and trampled them to mincemeat under his feet. When the master had ended his teaching, he declared the truths and identified the births, saying, At that time the mischievous monkeys were the wicked relatives of the good man. The rogue elephant was the one who will punish them, but the virtuous noble elephant was the Tathagata himself in a former incarnation. After this discourse, one of the brethren rose and asked leave to propose a question, and when the permission was granted, he said, I have heard the doctrine that wrong should be met with wrong, and the evildoer should be checked by being made to suffer. For if this were not done, evil would increase, and good would disappear. What shall we do? And the blessed one answered, Nay, I will tell you, you have left the world and have adopted this glorious faith of putting aside selfishness. You shall not do evil for evil, nor return hate for hate. 
neither think that you can destroy wrong by retaliating evil for evil, and thus increasing wrong. Leave the wicked to their fate, and their evil deeds will sooner or later, in one way or another, bring on their own punishment. And the Tathagata repeated these stanzas. Who harms the man who does not harm, or strikes at him who strikes him not, shall soon some punishment incur, which his own wickedness begot. One of the greatest ills in life, either a loathsome dread disease, or sad old age, or loss of mind, or wretched pain without surcease, or conflagration, loss of wealth, or of his nearest kin he shall see some one die that's dear to him, and then he'll be reborn in hell. You see in life, in your life. This was an age-old story from the parables and stories of Buddha. But you cannot defeat evil with evil. You cannot conquer hate with hate. Stay true to your good nature, and you will see someone who does you wrong, someone who annoys you, someone who is unjust, will find their fate presented to them. You concentrate on your life, on your goodness, and on your pure heart. This is Dare to Do Motivation, Buddha Stories. Thank you so much for watching, and stay blessed.